This is CBC Here and Now. Because we thought we'd get better deals. <laughs> We're crazy, I guess. Well, you got to look for the deal, right? Hundreds ventured out in the cold to brave Boxing Day sales. The lineups were long, the savings were big, but was it worth the wait? Good evening, I'm Carolyn Stokes. That story in just a few moments, but first, police are reminding the public about the importance of seatbelt use following a fatal crash on Christmas Day. It happened on Route 80 Trinity Road between Heart's Desire and Heart's Content shortly after 3 p.m. A 62-year-old man from New Perlican was ejected from his vehicle and later died in hospital. RCMP say it was a single vehicle crash and there were no other passengers inside. And portions of a busy Mount Pearl street were closed today following an early morning house fire. Fire and emergency crews got the call around 5 o'clock this morning that a house on Commonwealth Avenue was burning. The RNC closed part of the road in the Whitley Drive area while Newfoundland Power cut electricity to the single story house. Firefighters used chainsaws to cut through the roof and target hot spots in the attic. According to a neighbor, the residents of the home were away for the holidays. A member of one of this province's most prominent families has just been named to the Order of Canada. Rob Crosby, chairman of the Crosby Group of Companies, is being named for his contributions to industry, his community volunteerism, as well as his support of education and health care. Crosby is the son of the late businessman Andrew Crosby, the nephew of former federal cabinet minister John Crosby, and the cousin of current PC leader Chess Crosby. 103 appointments were announced this morning. Crosby is the only representative from Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, it's expected to be a banner year for Newfoundland and Labrador. That's according to the Conference Board of Canada. The think tank says we'll have the fastest growing economy in all of Canada in 2019, thanks to an increase in oil royalties. That's good news for a province that's $15 billion in debt. The report cited future developments like the Bay de Nord development project, which is expected to start construction in 2020. Employment is projected to increase in the new year. Year. Significant wage increases aren't expected until then. And while most of us are eating our way through Christmas leftovers, many people across the province have nothing left. Here and now is Colleen Connors stop by the food bank in Corner Brook to find out why it's still important to give after December. While the Christmas rush may be over and the turkey dinner is long over with, that doesn't mean that some people still don't need donations and food on the table this time of year. Volunteers with the Food Bank Network at the Salvation Army pack food hampers. People drop by all day today looking for grocery essentials, cereal and canned vegetables. December month is a month of giving and it's on the top of everybody's priority list as we know. Um, but after Christmas, I mean, we still have families that are in need. Um, we all have extra company throughout Christmas, so it kind of cuts into that food um, that they have um, to last them, you know, for that uh, amount of time. The shelves are well stocked now after December's large donation drives. But staff here say that doesn't last long. By next month, shelves are bare. Well, January and February, I mean, are colder months. And of course, um, in Newfoundland, we know that gets quite cold. Um, so we get a lot of people uh, that, you know, have a budgeted light bill and that kind of spikes. So uh, the extra food money uh, doesn't go to food. It goes to keeping them warm. The Salvation Army also offers emergency accommodations and clothing donations to families in need who don't have any extra money this time of year. What is it that you really really need here in January and, and into the winter months? Uh, well, it's the same as all year round, Colleen, to be honest. It's it's food. Uh, food is all year. We don't ever want to think that it's just the month of December. And we thank everyone that's ever donated and continues to give all year round. Donations can be dropped off anytime during the day. Colleen Connors, CBC News, Cornerbrook. 
Well, turning now to the weather forecast, uh, St. John saw a great day uh, today, but some nastier weather is on the way for tonight and for Saturday. Here's a look at your weather on the way headlines. A chance of some snow squalls continuing for the metro area in southern Avalon tonight. Temperatures on the island and in Labrador staying very cold, especially with that wind chill and some snow is on the way for the whole province starting tomorrow night in the west and tracking east on Saturday. So there are some warnings in place. Snow squall warning for the Avalon accumulation only around two to five centimeters, but areas with the heaviest bands of snow could see upwards of 20 centimeters and the snow and winds should taper off overnight. And then we have this special weather statement in effect for Friday night and Saturday snow and high winds for the island in southeastern Labrador. That snow should change to freezing rain or ice pellets for parts of the island by Saturday afternoon. I'll have a closer look at that a little bit later. Well, officially, Boxing Day is behind us, but that didn't slow down eager shoppers on the Avalon. Parking lots were full and stores were packed as customers again braved the stores, this time in pursuit of Boxing Day deals. Here and now's Meg Roberts joined in. Lots of televisions were being carried out of Best Buy this afternoon, and earlier this morning there was a lineup out the door as courageous shoppers were out hunting for those Boxing Day deals. I wanted to wait till the uh, sales went on instead of spending a lot for Christmas. Was it crazy in there? What was it like? It was really busy. It was kind of like help yourself kind of thing on the go in there. Um, everyone was doing something. There was lineups for everything. It was, it was a lot. <laughs> uh, because it's Boxing Day, half prices like that. <laughs> Were the prices good in there? Yeah, it's a good price. Well, she had to get that. A PS4. <laughs> a PS4. Did you want that? Yeah. <laughs> How badly did you want it? Like a lot. <laughs> so why did you decide to get it today instead of before Christmas? Well, it's no sale, but we just, I thought it might be on sale, but it was no sale, but she wanted it. She saved her money for it, so. This TV was on sale, that's about it. It wasn't just Best Buy that had a full parking lot. Inside the Avalon Mall, some shoppers had to wait outside their favorite stores. Although not everyone was upset about the wait. It's very busy, <laughs> but fun. You know what, I enjoy this, going out, seeing the people, you know, being in the crowd, it's fun. Just for something to do, mostly, to get out of the house now. What kind of things are you shopping for? Clothes, mostly. So this is a personal shopping trip? Yes, yes. Everything else was for everyone else, so now it's time for me. <laughs> if you didn't have a chance to get out today, there's still time. Some of those sales are set to run until the end of the month. Meg Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. Before, I didn't think I would have a lot of opportunities like other people that don't have autism. Then I proved people wrong that I'm smart. An inclusion program in Gambo is working to help people find purpose. A Christmas update coming up.
national celebration. Join host Jerry D live from Niagara Falls for a night of fireworks and fun with music from across the country and with a local midnight countdown. Everyone can celebrate Canada's New Year's Eve countdown to 2019 on CBC. Welcome back to Here and Now. Time now for a look at your weather forecast. Starting off with the satellite and radar, we're looking at some snow squalls for the Avalon Peninsula overnight tonight. So things are going to be a bit blustery. We do have a snow squall warning in effect, about two to five centimeters expected uh, there, but could see up to 20 centimeters of snow in those heaviest snow bands of snow squalls overnight tonight. As we uh, look at the rest of the province for Labrador, looking over pretty clear overnight tonight. Some flurry action for the West Coast after the Bonavista North area uh, overnight, but overall looking like a fairly quiet evening. But look at those temperatures. It is cold. Minus 11 in St. John's as the overnight low, but with that wind chill going to feel more like minus 20 and those northwesterly winds gusting up to 60. So it's not going to be the most uh, pleasant evening. You'll want to bundle up for sure if you're heading out. Minus 22 as a wind chill for the West Coast and some flurries along the coast there throughout the evening uh, tonight. And as I mentioned, fairly clear for most of Labrador, but Labrador City getting down to a low of minus 30, minus 41 with the wind chill overnight tonight. So very, very chilly, light winds as well. As we head into Friday, looking fairly clear for most of Labrador for the day, but we do have a system that's moving in later on in the afternoon. We do have a chance of some flurry action on the island, but mostly the island is going to be a mix of sun and cloud. But there is a chance we could see a flurry in St. John's, minus eight as the high, and those winds staying fairly strong tomorrow, gusting up to 60 kilometers an hour. For Central, could see some flurries as well, but mostly going to be a mix of sun and cloud throughout the day tomorrow, minus nine as the high in Gander and Grand Falls for the West Coast as well could see uh, a few flurries throughout the morning and then clearing off in the afternoon and winds not too bad easing to a northwesterly gusting up to 40. Lots of sunshine for the Straits, Mary's Harbor, Cartwright, but temperatures staying very, very chilly. Minus 12 as the high for that area tomorrow and cold as well along the coast of Labrador. Minus 18 in Nain and uh, Labrador City looking at a wind chill of minus 24 throughout the day and when that system starts to move in tomorrow afternoon looking at about two to four centimeters of snow to start. So we do have this uh, special weather statement in effect from Environment Canada for the island. It's mostly because of the snow and blowing snow expected there, but there's going to be a prolonged snowfall for southeastern Labrador. So that's going to be Saturday continuing on into Sunday. This is how the system is going to play out. Lots of snow pushing across Labrador from west to east, starting on the west coast of the island uh, overnight on Friday night, early Saturday morning. It continuing on uh, through Saturday. And here you can see where that changeover to flurry, uh, to drizzle rather, will start happening on Saturday afternoon. St. John's looking at that messy mix at around five o'clock there uh, on Saturday. So temperatures staying fairly warm on the island compared to what we've seen lately. Uh, lots of snow for Labrador on Saturday and then continuing uh, on Sunday. So this is where this Environment Canada weather statement comes into effect because we do have the snow that's continuing in southeastern Labrador and along the west coast of the island on Sunday. So lots and lots of snow. Not sure about the amounts yet, but it's going to keep snowing. Cool temperatures as well staying put for Lab City. Uh, minus 20 and there zero as the high on Sunday for uh, for St. John's and along the south coast there of the island. So now we get into New Year's Eve. Everyone wants to know how the weather is going to look there. So far, so good. Labrador looking fairly clear. You can see the possibility of some snowfall on the west coast, but St. John's and Central looking fairly clear throughout uh, the day on Monday and into Monday night. So we'll find out more about uh, how that will pan out tomorrow. And an open door program in Gambo is wrapping up its first year. The Gambo Inclusion and Wellness Program offers a safe space for people facing a variety of challenges. Here now's Garrett Berry recently met up with the program in Gambo as members were visiting a retirement home. Uh, what we're doing today is uh, we're just kind of giving the seniors like a gist of what we do as a community outside of the home. We had Zumba, like we had a lady, a local lady come and help us with Zumba, um, which was a big, huge success. 
uh, yeah, and we just do like different activities, and it's really fun to do. In their fields, watching over their sheep. They range from um, in their 20s to, we have one gentleman that's just a few months ago turned 65. So um, a number of them, they probably wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't have a group to associate with. And so this brings them together. So they no longer feel they're alone. Most of my friends in school were, were either autistic or ADHD like myself, but I have found that as, as I've grown older, most, uh, most of the, my schoolmates have moved out of town and everything, so it, been, it, been, it has been hard to find people other than them to relate to as well. So. I just like socialization and I'm also, I'm, a, I'm autistic as well, so I find that uh, socialization is key for me, so now I don't always have to feel alone all the time. So. I find that I interact with more people than I used to, and I'm getting into more interactions than I ever was. Ever since I started work, I got a lot better with my um, communication skills. Before, I didn't think I would have a lot of opportunities like other people that don't have autism, but now I done my driving school and I got my license. And now I can go around, and I got my job, and and I got. And then I prove people wrong that I'm smart. How does that feel to be able to say that you prove people wrong? Oh, it feels really good. I bet. It do. Good job. Singer-songwriter Chris Andrews has put a bounty on his beard. Earlier this month, the Shiny Ganuck frontman said he is prepared to shave it off all for a little girl in need. Andrews is helping Jess Stamp Hillier and her family fundraise for a new wheelchair-accessible van. The 11-year-old has a rare genetic disease that makes it hard for her to move around. As part of that fundraiser, Andrews vowed to shave off his iconic whiskers live on on stage. So far, $7,000 has been raised, a ways off from the $25,000 he had hoped for. But while gearing up for his band's annual Christmas concert in St. John's today, Andrew says the beard will go no matter what. The fact that people gave $7,000 is impressive, you know, for this little girl. Most of them don't know. You know, and the beard is only a part of it. That's just me saying, you know, helping out all put something into it too, you know, but it's the people who are donating and making this happen, the volunteers, the family, the community, it's a good thing. Working high above Halifax Harbor, crane operators play the ultimate game of Tetris. They're one of the many crucial links in an increasingly complex business of shipping, connecting the land and sea transportation. CBC's Brett Ruskin was given rare access to one of Canada's busiest ports. It's not a good job if you're claustrophobic. After you. Thank you. Ah, sorry. And definitely not if you're afraid of heights. It's uh, pretty intense at times. This is Terry Smallwood. He's been working these cranes for nearly two decades. It is, it is kind of like a video game. And, uh, except you don't get three lives here. <laughs> it's a job measured in minutes, tons and centimeters. This container weighs 26 tons. That's like swinging two school buses from atop a 15-story building. Then you have to slot them perfectly in place. I have like, when you see the cell guide, I have no, no room on either side of the container. It's, it, you have to be dead on. A good operator can lift, move and lower a container in less than two minutes. Get the cargo off. Get the cargo on, turn the ship around. It's gonna, it's, its main purpose is to be transiting to the next port of call. So the shorter we make that time, the more efficient we use that time, the better it is for the customer. And those customers keep coming back. Last year was one of the busiest for the port of Halifax with more than a half million containers moved. They came from Europe, Asia, and South America. Each day, trucks and trains leave here for Toronto, Montreal, and south of the border. And in those containers, just about everything. So like cameras, cameras TVs, TVs, we've seen livestock, we've seen, uh, 
There's lots of frozen commodities going, lots of meat, lots of french fries, lots of interesting stuff. And so again, thanks to this port, Halifax is connected to more than 150 countries all around the world. Brett Ruskin, CBC News, Halifax. Like they're so cute, they're so sweet. It's like a little, a little uh, ray of sunshine, you know, and all the stress of traveling, especially with kids. <laughs> One of the country's busiest airports is relying on a four-legged ground crew to help calm the Either holiday chaos. Almost four years ago, I became a quadruple amputee. I had a stroke. People who have overcome some major life challenges. Come on, come when I came to, my arm was pretty well dismembered. I have bad days and good days. It kind of depends on the day. We're checking back in to see where they are today. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. A new series on CBCNL coming this January. And this is my story. Hey, Newfoundland and Labrador, our CBC Feed NL Day was a huge success. Thank you for your generosity. This campaign supports the Community Food Sharing Association, and they support people in your neighborhood. But before we wrap up 2018, there's still time to make a contribution. Just visit cbc.ca slash feednl and click the donate button. 
No donation is too small, so please give before the clock strikes 12 on New Year's Eve. Welcome back. The Christmas season brings some of the busiest travel days of the year, and that means long lines, delayed flights, and luggage that's full to bursting. But one of Canada's busiest airports is trying to make the experience better with the help of man's best friend. Jayla Bernstein reports from Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> At Montreal's Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport, they call this crew the Pet Squad. It's a team of 30 volunteers and their dogs with one mission, cuddles. These are our dogs and we just come and volunteer and hang out. So we're just here to make people's day better. So I hope we did that. <laughs> You're welcome. Good. Sisters Tammy and Tracy Gallagher have been volunteering together here since the squad launched in October. Now they're a permanent fixture. So I want my I want my cuddles too. We saw that passengers were happy, employees of the airport as well. Uh, they will pet the dogs before they do their shift just to calm their nerves. So it's kind of a little fun thing that they can do on their break. With an average 55,000 travelers passing through each day, the holiday season is the busiest of the year for the airport. A stressful time for many traveling families, which makes the pet squad even more appreciated. Oh, look at Santa's here too. When I saw the dogs, it was like an instant like, oh, like they're so cute, they're so sweet. It's like a little, a little uh, ray of sunshine, you know, in all the stress of traveling, especially with kids. <laughs> I thought this was the best thing since sliced bread because there is something about a calming, an animal to calm you and to calm you in, in lines like this in a busy travel day before all the holidays. They let passengers approach them first in case people have allergies, but most passengers, and journalists as well, seem to get a kick out of the experience. And the dogs and their owners love it too. So you don't really know the ripple effects you have. And we need more of that in this world, you know? Jayla Bernstein, CBC News, Montreal. It's a great idea. Definitely make me relax in an airport for sure. Well, that's uh, about it for this half hour edition of Here and Now, but stay tuned because in our next half hour, we have part one of an intimate holiday special with the Fortunate Ones. That production is thanks to our colleagues at the St. John's Morning Show, hosted by Chrissy Holmes and Fred Hutton, and taped right here in Studio F at the CBC building on University Avenue. So that's ahead uh, just after the break, and I'll be back with you here again tomorrow evening. I hope you can join me uh, but before we leave you here's another look at uh, a little video that CBC put together Anthony had a bad Christmas feeling uh -huh. press me to wrap from the floor up to the ceiling though he's a newsman incomparable to rapid presence he's really terrible tell me what's Christmas TV news got to do Best friend Debbie asked for basketball. Peter got a puppy but ran up down the hall. Carolyn wanted a new toboggan but he slipped and he tripped and he hit his noggin. Poor old Anthony, he don't look good for you. Now you might think it's hysterical, but he needed a Christmas miracle. Just then Santa showed up on his sleigh. He said, come with me, there's a better way. December 14th, they went to the Avalon Mall. Bop, 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 bop. The CBC friends were waiting there one and all. Bop, 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 bop. They wrapped his presents in a flash. All they asked for was a little cash. He said, by golly, you saved my Christmas day. So come be part of the big sensation and help the Community Food Sharing Association. December 14th is feed and help for you. Wrap your presents and help the hungry too. Turn your Christmas red and green if you're feeling kind of blue.